in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Luke chapter 6, please. Luke chapter 6, and we'll begin our reading from verse 36. Luke chapter 6 from verse 36. Jesus is teaching the disciples now, and he introduces the subject of mercy again. He says, be ye therefore merciful, as your heavenly Father also is merciful. Please keep that scripture. What he is saying there is, now that you have understood the mercy of God, your understanding is not complete until you know that a responsibility now comes upon you by reason of what you know. That the same way your father is merciful, there is a mandate and a call upon you to be merciful in the same vein. He says, be ye therefore merciful as your father so it gives you a standard to understand the standard of mercy you are supposed to live up to you have to understand the father's mercy and that's what we took our time to teach yesterday remember i forgot to tell you that we dealt with the story of the prodigal son theologically speaking that is the most classic expression of the subject of mercy and I did tell us yesterday from the story that at one point or the other in your life, you must become like the prodigal son's father and even the prodigal son himself. All of us will play that scene in our lives as the father communicating mercy to a defaulter or as the son needing mercy from the father. We usually would start as the son everyone here in iniquity we were born and so at one point or the other we would have to come to the father the prodigal son said i will arise and i will go to my father and i will say unto him father i have sinned against you and against heaven i am not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your servants so at one point or the other in our lives we are going to be in need of mercy from god and from men and then at one point or the other in our life or lifetime, there will be need to administer mercy to someone. Are we together? So Jesus is teaching here and he says, back to Luke chapter 6 from verse 36. He says, to be merciful even as your father, 636, is also merciful. 37 now. It says, judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Then we now go to verse 38, where we know. We talk a lot about 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. But it was a string of similar thoughts that led to verse 38. Here he teaches us that mercy is also a harvest. That you are not authorized to receive of that harvest of mercy until you invest in sowing that seed. Are we together now? So he says, give. The same way giving is a seed that brings a harvest. He's also saying that mercy is a seed. And that if you fail to sow mercy, there is a guarantee that you will not receive mercy also. Hmm. Are we blessed? The Bible encourages us on the subject of mercy. Let's look at two or three scriptures. Proverbs chapter 3, please, from verse 3 and 4. Proverbs chapter 3, from verse 3 and 4. Let not mercy and truth forsake you, the Bible says. 
bind them about your neck he says write them upon the tablet of your heart verse 4 so shall you find favor look at this now he's teaching you a powerful principle that if you pay attention to the subject of mercy and you keep it close to your consciousness you will find favor and good understanding both in the sight of god and man hallelujah praise the name of the lord many of us think of mercy only from the standpoint of god releasing or reaching down to a defaulter or reaching down to one who is inadequate to provide help but we fail to understand that the bible says to be christ-like in every way and when it says to be christ-like it's not just in the demonstration of power and of miracles of signs and wonders alone we must be christ-like even in expressing the character of Christ and that includes being apt to show mercy hallelujah Jesus taught when he walked upon the earth Jesus taught and he mentored the disciples using parables and there was a reason why he did that a parable is an earthly thought an earthly um, revelation that is captured I mean a heavenly revelation that is captured in earthly expression so he would use agriculture he would use uh, thoughts that were they were accustomed to as far as their civilization was concerned in one of these parables we we'll only consider one for this service Luke chapter 10 is called the parable of the Good Samaritan we we'll begin our reading from verse 25 Jesus now is teaching us the character of mercy Luke 10 25 are we still here and behold he said a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him saying master what shall I do to inherit eternal life and he said unto him what is written in your law how readest thou 27 and he answering said thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart your soul and your strength and your mind and then you shall love your neighbor the same way that you love yourself 28 jesus begins to teach now he said unto him thou hast answered right this do and thou shall live 29 but he willing to justify himself said unto jesus who is that neighbor that is deserving of my love that is deserving of the communication of mercy from me then Jesus begins his parable. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, follow closely now, and fell among thieves, the Bible says, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Remember our teaching on mercy, that mercy has two expressions. On one hand, it has to do with granting pardon to a defaulter, an offender or a sinner but the other expression is communicating the action that is derived when you have pity upon one who is unable to help himself are we together strengthening men from their inadequacies now here we see a man the bible says that man was beaten by robbers and was left half dead verse 31 and by chance there came down to him a certain priest. This was a man of God. He came to a certain, he came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Look at that. Hold on. Let's not rush. 31. Let's discuss this issue. The Bible would have just said two men passed him. But the Bible describes the kind of men because there is an information we must derive. Number one, he says a certain priest. A priest is a committed, ordained, and zealous man of God. This man was on his way to church to serve God and to prove to God that he loved him so much. And the Bible says he saw one. He was on his way to go and obtain mercy from God. And now seeing one who was half dead, the Bible says he did not even pay attention to such a man remember i told you that mercy is a harvest here was an opportunity for the priest to be christ-like 
and to sow that seed of mercy over this innocent man who you know the bible says withhold not good from them with whom it is due when it is within your power this is a priest so the priest was not naive as to the expectations of god based on scripture he was not an amateur spiritually based on their standard of knowledge and yet he saw a man who was incapacitated and left him for dead to rush to church how many christians act today like that priest we are zealous to do a lot of spiritual things and then we leave some of the the weightier matters in the eyes of God. There are many people who are needing and deserving of mercy and it is within our power to reach unto them but we we'll prefer to fulfill the rituals of religion than to be sincere and reach down to those who are deserving of that mercy. The Bible says the priest was hurrying up to church and he left an opportunity now the problem is who was the witness there because jesus is giving a parable the priest would think no one was watching that parable also reveals that there is the all-seeing eye of god watching over the works of men you would think because there were no physical witness nobody would call that man to order and here jesus is giving in that parable a very silent information that you must speak that i am watching even when there is no one there are we together so the priest passed by to the other side an expression of disdain no 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 i have nothing to do with you you are unclean you are almost dying i'm not ready to take that responsibility upon myself verse 32 likewise the levite here you are again these are all spiritual people in in various sense and he was at the place and came and looked on him and passed by now 33 then a certain samaritan as he journeyed he came where he was and when he saw him here is our word again compassion i told you that the foundation for mercy is compassion what is compassion pity what is compassion the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity had compassion on him what was the response every response in honor to your compassion is called mercy now you see mercy in action 34 he had compassion on him the bible says and he went to him and he bound up his wounds pouring oil and wine and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him next verse please and on the morrow when he departed he took out two pens and gave them to the host and said unto him take care of him and whatsoever thou spendest more what a compassionate samaritan when i come again i will repay you who is teaching here jesus jesus is showing us something very powerful 36 which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor to him that fell among the thieves here's our chance to answer don't assume you know the answer you might be wrong which of these three the man of god the priest the levite or the supposedly um, inferior and dejected samaritan one was a powerful man of god probably having a ministry both of them were successful people and here is a samaritan who is demonstrating christ-like character in a way that it was more than enough for him to have at least bound him and left him but the bible says he took him to the inn kept him there gave two pence and said i will return back does that sound like jesus who will leave 99 to look for the one and when he's found that one he will rejoice 37 verse 37 and he said he that showed mercy on him 
So what did Jesus call that entire action? Mercy. From the time he had compassion until he left, plus his thinking, everything together, Jesus calls it so the next time you are looking for an expression of mercy, go to that story. From the moment the man had compassion, everything he did in honor to that compassion, Jesus calls it in one word, mercy. Jesus now leaves us with a command. He says, go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. That means... At every point in your life, remember you can be three of these people to anyone in need of mercy. You can act like the priest who ignores that person in a bid to honor your spirituality. You can act like the Levite who would ignore him. Or you can act like the Samaritan who may look foolish for the moment, but in the mind of God is communicating mercy. Every one of us will have a chance to be one of these three people in our lifetime sadly respectfully so many of us for a long time have been like the priest obsessed about spirituality the first to pray the first to lie down the first to roll the first to say lord i love you the first to say lord you can count on me but here is an opportunity to demonstrate the love of jesus and we frown Many of us are like the Levites. We're on our way going to do the things that we have to do that make for life, godliness, spirituality, and we ignore the weightier matters. You see, in the mind of God, most of the things we do not pay attention to are the things that really touch the heart of God. The charismatism around Christianity and religion, that can easily receive an applause from men because it seems to be obvious. Power, healings, miracles, all of these things. But there are things that nobody may be there to clap for you for. But in the mind of God, those things are priceless before him. Can I tell you, everyone seated here, there is an opportunity for you today in our world to show someone mercy. It can be your house help. It can be your aid. It can be somebody in need of compassion. It can be a child whose school fees is less than 10, 20,000 and you can pay. Even if it's one time. Many times we give. Many times we communicate expressions of love. Provided there is a structure to notice us and shout our praise. Respectfully speaking, that's what you see our wonderful politicians and the rest do. No one is really greedy. People just want it in exchange for praise that must be loud. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Can I tell you sincerely? There are many people today who are suffering in this nation and suffering across the globe because during the active periods of their lives they had the opportunity to sow the seed of mercy to undeserving people by now they would have been rich recipients of that harvest some of them while they were in the civil service some of them while they were in government some of them while they were in power some of them as preachers they had moments every day god gave them an opportunity to sow the seeds of mercy they were the only people in their entire world right now respectfully speaking some of those people alongside their children are suffering from the starvation of mercy why because they fail to extend mercy there are people today whose children should easily get jobs based on the kinds of influence they had while they were working but they didn't raise anybody they didn't lift anybody people cried in front of their offices and they insulted insulted them jamming the door in front of them and according to the law of times and seasons the tides have changed can I tell you? Don't tell me I'm not educated. Don't tell me, Apostle, I don't have the privilege of coming from a great family. You do not know that the Samaritan you so mercy for today might be the one to help you carry your cross. There are people today who 
did not have the privilege of say education the privilege of connections but my goodness they are wealthy recipients of the harvest of mercy that they sowed they sowed into the lives of several people when I learned this principle I made up my mind that as much as God grants me grace I will be as merciful the same way God has shown me mercy apt to provide pardon to defaulters apt to bring forgiveness to sinners and then as much as it is within my power that I will help as many who are inadequate and it is my within my power to help them if I cannot help you with money I can help you with quality spiritual information that can guide your decisions if I cannot help you if I cannot reach you with that information I can help you through the ministry of prophetic intercession in any case I can sow that seed of mercy I remind you this morning dear people of God more than just receiving from a merciful God we must become merciful men to men it does not just stop at receiving from God give us this day he said our daily bread and he says forgive us our trespasses even as we forgive those who trespass against us I told you that the communication of mercy stems from the fact that there is something about the nature of man please look up it is easy to forgive and let go when you understand the the intrinsic construct of the falling man that all of us at best are still flawed it is only a matter of time in teaching on the subject of mercy I always teach that you will be deserving of mercy at one point or the other the condition is not to be a sinner the condition is to be human provided you are human I give you the gift of time and may it help you reveal how human you are because no matter how self-righteous no matter how flawless and blameless you seek to walk provided you enjoy this gift of time i guarantee you one day you will be in need of mercy therefore be careful when you point hands at people time is waiting to reveal something about you be careful when you bring down people with joy be careful when you rejoice over the pain of people i'm not saying to permit and allow licentiousness but can i tell you there must be a component of mercy there are some of us who say that's how i am i am hard once i stamp my feet that's the end of it i beseech you by reason of the fact that you are human change change god forbid I can't help this person accept it as a statement that you made in ignorance and repent this morning because I assure you even if you are Jesus a day will come you will not have the power to carry the cross on your own your Jesus the all-powerful the one who raised the dead could not carry wood raise the dead but now Jesus was bleeding and he needed help someone in that crowd remembered him feeding the five thousand someone in that crowd remembered him sitting at the well because of one woman and he said everyone may be ashamed of you but let me come to help you can i tell you there are many of you the seeds of mercy you are sowing now will be equal to a destiny of beauty and color for your children experience has taught us that people will forget what you said but they will never forget how you made them feel. Can I tell you? We live in a world today that seems to downplay anybody that does not have any constructive value to match your level. We must be careful. We must be careful. When you see a successful man, you've seen all he can become. But when you see someone who is yet becoming, you don't know how far he can become. The child today may be your destiny helper tomorrow the nobody today may be the one God will use to lift you is someone learning now so let us not just pray and ask the merciful God to visit us and say oh thou God of mercy come and visit me and then he is asking you a question I am more than willing because my mercies are new every morning but are you willing to communicate the same mercy 
I wish I had the time I would have taught, told you another and taught you another parable a parable of a man who was owing he was owing little and he went to the king and the king made a statement and told him he said okay no problem because he cried he said I'll let you go and he ran and met someone who was owing him far less and forced the man and said you must pay me forgive us our trespasses as we forgive do you know what that means always remember that you are human it's not a call to weakness it's a, it's a call to remember that the best of us will still be limited hallelujah one time I was praying for a man and his dear wife they had a very serious misunderstanding and we're just trying to manage the situation and the man turned and told his wife I'm sorry and he said I will never offend you again I said stop there Oga you are lying I know this is an emotional moment I know you are being sincere but you are just being human let's not make a fool of ourselves here it will happen again let me tell you the difference between forgiveness and forbearance forgiveness means to pardon a default forbearance means to create a permanent system of accommodation over that weakness because it will happen again and again and again there are many people in your life you don't need to forgive you need to forbear this is a revelation no? and this is a deliverance service for someone you have been trying to forgive people you need to forbear that's why the pain will not let you rest if you know I'm a talkative and I will remain so all my life advising me to be quiet is a waste of time forbear are we together you see let me tell you this there is no disappointment until there is an expectation once you do not expect you can't be disappointed Believers are encouraged, like God, to be people that show mercy and compassion. Believers are encouraged, based on scripture, that like God, we are to be people who are able to show mercy and show compassion. This is true. This is a church with so many leaders and so many successful people, and I can tell you, the moment you become a leader at any level, it will take the grace of God and this revelation to show mercy because people will annoy you every day. Your life and your organization will be full of people with different shades of wisdom. And you will need to, to trust God for grace. Sometimes the way to show mercy is just to be quiet. Because if you open your mouth and speak, you may wreck and destroy someone's life forever. Hallelujah. Mercy is very powerful. I keep sowing seeds of mercy because I know that I'm human. Someone said, Apostle, I love you so much. I said, you are right. That's because there are many things you don't know. You've not seen me hungry. You've not seen me shouting at anybody. You like the version you see. Hmm. If the only thing you have towards me is love, I don't trust you. Let me see the mercy comport. Do you still have mercy in place? It will guarantee the longevity of our relationship. If the only thing you have towards me is love, I don't trust you. Hmm. Some of you, is when you listen to this message again, you will hear something that you didn't hear now. Peter looked at Jesus and he made all kinds of statements. I won't do this and that and Jesus looked at him before a small girl Peter ran away called a small girl woman said, I don't know him and he ran away when Jesus Peter was angry and offended that Jesus had made them made them to leave fishing under a proposition that they will be great people now he, he had died and left them with nothing remember Peter had a family he was angry and in John 21 he said I go a fishing let me not do two zero let me go back to what I was doing and leave this karma who deceived me for three and a half years and the disciples said we go with you the Bible says as they were fishing they caught nothing and then a stranger stands by the seashore and says little children have you any catch 
little children who is speaking and then he says cast your nets to the right side and Peter casted his net to the right side and he caught so much fish and then he realized that it was Jesus the Bible says he washed his clothes and came and said depart from me I'm a sinner brokenness you have done something for me I don't deserve this catch not after all the things I did and said to you but now you came and acted as if you cannot even remember any of those and he sat with Jesus and while they were eating he asked him a question he said Simon Bajona lovest thou me more than this God is asking you the same question Lord I love you he's saying how much I love you enough to keep all the principles you have taught in scripture then he tells you go and do likewise be a sower of the seeds of mercy that there are some of you after this service you need to get up and in fact I'm not I'm not teaching you to be careless but there are some of you sincerely there are people for instance who owe you and there is no there is no way under heaven based on their level of thinking that they will be able to pay you and the truth is that that money you really do not need it based on the way God has increased you I'm challenging someone could it be possible to call that family and advise them and talk to them don't just forgive them if you forgive people and don't sow the seed of knowledge you wasted the opportunity and you call them and say look I gave you a chance this is only 50,000 it's not about the money I was watching your communication of responsibility I know you cannot pay I will forgive you but to replace your ignorance let me help you understand that next time this is how to approach life go and then heaven records it and adds it to the credit of your children and one day you'll find out that your child is just soaring on the wings of favor and God will remind you that 10 years ago this was the seed you sowed can I tell you I do not mean to be a bearer of bad news people of God but there are many of you if the harvest that comes from the seed you are sowing now actually comes get ready for a painful life because many of us have invested our adult life sowing seeds of pain please don't be offended we came to teach on mercy joining the heads of people together and standing with joy while you watch all of them argue it out is a seed this service this morning we are going to find time to pray and say Lord show me mercy even if it's for the sake of my children I have sown seeds in ignorance some of you you are not at that place of work again some of you you are not even in that nation again but you left a track record of pain that nobody from your family will be able to open that door again there are names in this nation that are padlocks there are names in this nation that are keys there are people who have had to change their names even their surnames as a safety net because if they dare hear who is this that surname remind me again you can't get the job but i'm qualified leave this place and they will recall an event can i tell you we live in a world where it's fashionable to be judgmental now as leaders we owe a responsibility to rebuke to correct to guide people in righteousness but can i tell you the truth it is mercy and truth oh. he says do not let mercy and truth truth alone without mercy is dangerous it's like driving a car with only an accelerator and no brake. No matter how careful you are, you will need both the accelerator and the brake to drive effectively. Some of us have only accelerators. We don't have brakes. We must be careful. We live in a world today where it is easy to point fingers at people. You hear that somebody's business went down. Or you hear that a family, maybe a woman's child stole or did something wrong. And we are very quick to point fingers. Can I tell you, I don't endorse evil. I don't endorse licentiousness. But believers, God is challenging us. Let us be the first to come and wrap our arms around wounded people. And show them love for God's sake. The world is already a place of pain, a place of misery. Let us not add to it okay so the man was involved in a fraudulent issue in his office and the newspaper is carrying everything around now you've seen that the man is broken and he's regretting what he has done we are not endorsing the sin but somebody must come and say look it's all right we do not endorse this but we are going to stand and cry with you
and like peter they'll say depart from me i am a sinner and you say remember we are all sinners who are saved by grace for the bible says if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and that the truth is not in us but if we confess our sins the bible says that god is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness I've had the honor and the privilege of crying with so many people by reason of what I do. Some of them politicians, some of them business people, some even men of God. Sincerely, I will tell you, some of them have come with charms and come with things to say, Apostle, I can't continue like this again. I was wrongly mentored. It's not that I wanted this. I was praying for the prophetic or praying for crowd and somebody took me to somebody to took me some and this and that and while they are saying that sometimes i find tears just trying to come out of my eyes because it would have been me the difference between me and that man is not discipline is mercy it would have been me can i tell you listen there are many of us that if you were exposed to the conditions of the people you are criticizing you will do 10 times worse the things they are doing hallelujah now please do not forget that we are not justifying evil here but we are teaching ourselves that all men are human and we must put in as we as we drive through this pathway called life you must reserve a space in your heart to show mercy hallelujah are we together yes you find out that someone just lost their loved ones don't go there and start shouting and saying where's your understanding of divine life blah blah mm -mm 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 -mm. you see as a man of god is a difficult thing especially when you walk in signs and wonders and miracles to stand and cry with people when they are bereaved most times when people die I'm usually one of the first that they reach because they are still hoping I can pray for the people to come back to life. And sometimes it is difficult. On one side, they watch your crusade and they see people rising up from wheelchairs, throwing crutches, and now they are saying, please help me. This is my only son. He just died. Some will even quote scriptures and say, I apostle, I know. One word from God. At that point, I don't need to be a preacher again. I need to be a human with great compassion. To say listen even though this person may not be able to come back to life we are here standing with you to cry it is powerful to be there with people when they are crying when you come to people when they are celebrating alone you came too late the journey starts from when the tears start not when celebration starts don't just meet the resurrected jesus and claim a stake in his life were you there on his way to golgotha there are many of you you will not be invited at the table of greatness of many because you are ignoring them now while they are crying and when they are left alone the god of all mercy will come and pick them and when you think they are dead you will still see them standing and you say oh i remember you they say no i don't remember you i remember the one who was there for me while i'm crying there are people today who were relieved from jobs and some of you are aware that their parents with three four children relieved from jobs I'm not putting you under pressure. Never for once did you even send 5,000 to say, sir, I may never be able to help you, but just to let you know that you are in my mind and you are my thoughts and my prayer. This may not do much, but even if it is to buy a recharge card, that 5,000 you have sent will be equal to 5 million tomorrow. It's an investment that does not fail. Be part of people's success story not just their celebration of it hallelujah praise the name of the lord i think it was two or three years ago in a ministry in zaria no no i think it was two years ago i'd left zaria not too long after i left zaria they called me one morning and said you know i don't know who threw her child just at our third overflow a baby just threw the baby and left the baby there and when i got to here i said ah really why would they do that who is that i mean even if she does not want the child for whatever reason you take them to a, a social welfare or this why throw the baby and i called the woman the woman who found the baby i looked at her i said madam would you do me a favor of taking care of this baby just be the mother i will fund the project 
I was in Zaria a few weeks ago and I was looking at that beautiful girl growing and I'm saying Lord thank you for the honor and the privilege immortalize your impact in others so that even if you are not there you are still alive in them he says Abel though dead yet speak it church is quiet I believe the Holy Spirit is drumming it into our spirit. Africans pray. We are the first to shout and roll and say mercy. And God is saying, the mercy you are asking for, are you willing to give it to others? Many times, respectfully speaking, we act like children. You know how children act? They stretch their hands. When you give them something, you say, give it back and they refuse. They forget that they were given. A man can receive nothing except it is given. Some of you have never been part of cleaning someone's tears. Christmas, you don't bless anybody except your friends. And that is simply because you are looking to maintain business opportunities. That's investment, not mercy. Remember, mercy is to an undeserving person. Please don't be offended. God is just drumming this into our spirits because we need to get it. It is within your power to do something today. It is within your power to do something today. By the privilege of God's grace, some of us are multi-millionaires. We have been helped by God. There's no need to hide it. But can I tell you, it is not what you have. It is who was lifted because of what you have. It is who was lifted because of what you are there. Let me tell you this, respectfully speaking. I come from the north and I will tell you this. It is in this one area, my apologies for my bias that you see Muslims and Northerners, they have mastered the art of showing mercy. They, oh, I can tell you, anybody who is honest in this morning service will nod his head in agreement with me. Hmm. Hallelujah. We need to be merciful and we need to be compassionate for our sakes and for the sake of our children and even our children's children this morning service we are going to pray and there are there are two prayers when it's time to pray we're going to pray two sets number one is to kill some wrong seeds we have sown now because if the seeds of lack of compassion that we have sown actually become harvests we will spend the remaining that means you have you have already enjoyed the happiest days of your life and we need to cancel it by the blood to say lord i made a mistake i have everybody around my life is fighting me because of my 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 show of hardness and i think it is proof of masculinity lord you have reminded me this morning that i'm human one day i will need that mercy let me tell you this respectfully speaking parents there are many of us the way we are treating our children now don't forget you will be old don't forget you will be old. One day you will not be able to move your legs. And it is not just your child who will help you. It's your track record that will help you. Sometimes you see very old people roaming around, moving, and you are wondering, why is mama, why is baba suffering like this? Don't they have children? Then they will tell you the child is somewhere in the U.S. Even running a charity foundation and blessing people. And the child will say, my mother rather dies or my father. I know what they did to me. I cried and I begged them. I pleaded with them to give me a chance for life. And they shut the door at me. But the God of all mercy came and met me. I believe in people. Provided a plant is not dead, you can still water it. You only stop watering a plant when it is dead. A dead plant cannot have life again. Or a plant that is dying can be revived. Hallelujah. I received several text messages from people, most of them for prayers, but then a few times people send me text messages and say something like, Apostle, thank you so much. You may not know me, but today I'm a graduate because of my fees that you paid, and I don't even know the people. Today, Apostle, thank you for what you have done. You cannot imagine this and that and that and that we are able to eat today because of this and that and i say lord thank you sometimes tears come out of my eyes and i say lord i remember where you took me from some of us this morning we need to remember where he took us from 
because you see the beauty of the palace can so erode the pain of the wilderness that you will forget it was from there you came Blessed are the merciful. Some of us need to go back right now and call our children together and say, look, gentlemen and ladies, I know you may not be doing well, but I need to tell you that I want to participate in your life. Provided you are alive, I will not give up on you. Remember, don't forget the condition I taught you for administering mercy. If you do not find brokenness, don't waste your time administering mercy. Let me repeat. If you do not find brokenness, no matter how emotional the people are, once you do not find brokenness, I give you an advanced information. Communicating mercy will be a waste of time. But if and when you find brokenness, let mercy prevail over judgment. Hallelujah. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me, oh. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me. Listen, it's time for you today to call somebody you know. You know that that woman has been bereaved, cannot help herself to say, listen, how have you been? Just to let you know that I love you and to let you know that if for any reason I can help to make your life easier, I am here. It's not all about money. Your prayer is also a gift. Compassion is also a gift. Many of you may have heard this in my teachings. That aside being a man of God. The greatest testimony about my life that I desire. Aside being a man of God. And aside being a lover of God. Is that I was a shoulder for wounded people. It's a testimony that is priceless to me. I can't wipe the tears of everybody, but let me do my best. Let me not see someone who is crying with brokenness, and then I have the power to help. I will help. I will certainly help. I have wept at funerals. I have cried with people. I have told people, listen, I may not be able to help. I may not be able to pray. I've prayed the person is not coming back to life. But at least let me help. The hymn writer. We used to sing the hymn in the seminary. And it says. Thus will we pass. From the earth. And it's toiling. Remember that song? Only remembered. By what we have done. Not by what we had not by the offices we occupied we must be guided by three things as we sojourn this path of life number one the fear of the lord number two conscience number three a sense of posterity so i recall for you again one more time and one last time the story of the samaritan The priest ignored that man who was in need of mercy. The Levite ignored that man who was in need of mercy. But when the Samaritan came, he did his best. Can I tell you, God does not burden us with any assignment to do everything and be everything to everyone. That is a call to a burden and a load, a luggage that God did not give you. But then God encourages us to do our best. Our best. As a man of God, I've made up my mind that I will do the best that I can. That my life and my ministry will be an instrument of mercy. This is why I do the things that I do. First, because I love Jesus. But sincerely, the second reason is because I love everyone I minister to. I don't go to preach to be a celebrity. I go to preach because I love God's people. And I know that if God has granted me the rare privilege 
of bringing an information that can help lighten their burden God has granted me an anointing that can help bring healing bring hope and help them then I will not waste it is God speaking to someone now we are going to pray the first prayer is going to be a cry for repentance some of us sincerely I don't mean to dishonor you but we need to pray this morning and say Lord change this heart of stone to a heart of flesh some of you even if you see a dead body on the ground you will kick it and move that is a is a Luciferian heart we have to pray and say Lord replace this heart of stone with a heart of flesh a heart of flesh a heart that can be compassionate that if someone is crying I can't just turn my face and act as though nothing happened no you hear that someone lost their loved ones even if you cannot bring resources to do anything you can come and say please let us pray Lord we pray for the comfort of the spirit and that's it that contribution Someday, if Christ tarries, whether you like it or not, we'll all not be here. It's a news many of us don't like hearing. If Christ tarries, every dead man today once stood before a dead body. Hmm. Please listen to me. I didn't come to waste your time this morning. This is one of those teachings you must archive in your heart. Did I do my best? to live for truth then I live my life for you when it's all been said and done all my treasures will mean nothing only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time Lord, your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find treasured gold in Mary clay, turning sinners into saints. And I will always sing your praise here on earth and ever for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life is gone i was not singing i was revealing something to you that someday that clock will stop and the treasure you have that can go with you is the treasure of mercy how far you reached for his namesake who you were able to help today some of you God is speaking to you you have not raised anybody aside from your biological children there is nobody today who has come to know Jesus because of you there is nobody who has had a life of meaning and purpose because of you no excuses it's time to make up our minds the women in this great church have gathered us this morning to remind us again it is not only the God of mercy we cry for for mercy we must pray that God will also make us merciful fire for fire will end two of you in ashes you will need to soft pedal your approach to life and approach it with mercy and compassion prayer point number one Lord walk on my heart is someone praying walk on my heart I don't know how you are going to cry to God this morning please don't act like you did not hear this preacher sent from God the foundations of Sapphire have called us together walk upon my heart I have been sowing wrong seeds I tremble at your word this morning grant me grace grant me grace I have participated in the pain and the destruction of many I am the reason why so many are in tears today I repent 
I repent, I repent, I repent before the God of all flesh. Someone pray, someone pray. Those following online, are you praying? Asking the God of all grace to purge your heart. Mercy is a harvest. If you do not sow that seed of mercy, do not expect a harvest. Someone is praying. Lord, the grace to cry with them that cry. The grace to stand with them who have demonstrated genuine brokenness. The grace to forbear. The grace to be merciful. To be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity. Please pray. The grace to communicate mercy. Let me stand by the grace of God and speak over someone. That by the power that raised Christ from the dead, if you have the faith to believe this, everything that has left you in shame reproach caused you to cry personally corporately i call upon my god who is also your god come out of that situation now come out of that situation now come out of that financial situation come out of that health situation come out of that business situation come out of that career situation in the name of Jesus Christ can I sing a song for you I receive I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up exalted I receive I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up glorified receive manifest his power and his wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up exalted receive manifest your power and your wisdom Lord till the nations See Jesus lifted up, glorified. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. It's a prayer tonight. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe. Sing it one more time from the depth of your heart. That something from heaven will rest upon your destiny. Till the nations see Jesus. Till the nations see Jesus. Till the nations see Jesus. Lifted up, glorified. Listen to me. I'm singing it for you, but it's your life and your results that will do the singing. Amen. The kind of results that will begin to flow from your life. And I'm speaking this upon you. 
and in this church you will begin to see extraordinary manifestations manifestations of power manifestations of wisdom that ordinary people will walk into this church and encounter Ebenezer the God that lifts men the God that helps men the God that rewrites the stories of men where a little one becomes a thousand a little one becomes a thousand that God will fish helpers from around the nation and bring them to your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ please be seated no shadow you will light up mountain you will climb up coming up to me no wall you will keep down lie you will tear down coming up to me no shadow you will light up no shadow you will light up mountain you will climb up coming up to me no wall you will Hear me, I rebuke the spirit of fear. For some of you, if you keep giving flimsy excuses, you will never make progress. You will watch others come behind you not to compare. Some of you have been giving excuses from time immemorial. Why have you know I, I need to calculate how I cause fear right now? In the name of Jesus. I cause fear right now. My God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Hear me, fountain of life. I cause fear. The fear of death, the fear of sickness, the fear of failure. I call it by name and I cause it by the God of heaven. The righteous is as bold as a lion. Listen, let me challenge you. Go and register that company after this conference. All you have is the money for registration. Go and register it. What do I do next? Place the CAC document on the ground and keep praying every day. Pray with your pen and paper. Let me tell you the truth. Fear is a cancer that has pegged many destinies there are people who fear they fear to their detriment it's better to fail honorably trying than to sit down giving flimsy excuses many of you have watched your vision transferred to people those who had the courage God gave you ideas you kept giving explanation he took it to somebody somewhere and the person began to run like Elijah and that vision has come to pass and you keep biting your finger and I saw this you are not the only one who saw it visions are like rainfall whoever brings out a container receives it are we together last year the Lord gave me an instruction to go and hold a conference in Manchester the largest indoor auditorium theater in the whole of the United Kingdom and that is a risk to hold a conference during a weekday and then the Lord gave me an instruction there he said there is a narrative about the church that I want to correct and because of that you're not going to raise any offering you will not collect any offering we had a workforce of over 2,000 plus five people and he says you will feed every one of them go and preach get that place filled up, pay everything, do everything and return. Huh. I wasn't born in UK. <laughs> if you don't have faith, you see, ba, no matter how you make in, in Africa, we call it mouth, you make mouth and all of that. 
you will be embarrassed to a point that your failure becomes a memorial that every time people want to warn others they say remember this person hmm. hallelujah when God brought great glory to his name I remember on my way back I said but God I fear you I fear you I fear you I fear you there is nothing God cannot do oh because I said it you didn't believe okay there is nothing you cannot do. Maybe if I sing it, you'll believe it. You cannot do. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word. Hallelujah. Samuel said, I will tell you why I'm anointed. I'm anointing you. The Lord has made you captain over his inheritance. Captain over his inheritance. Captain over his resources. Captain over his program. You're going to pray one prayer. Father, the kind of encounter I need to be a sign and a wonder let it rest upon me now go ahead and pray with power in the next one minute pray pray cry from the depth of your heart the grace for favor pray the grace for speed, the grace for restoration. Someone pray that every area of your life where you've not seen the glory of God manifest, you can pray. And even if you've seen the glory of God in that area, it can be from glory to glory, from glory to glory. If Jesus increased, you can increase. If Jesus increased in wisdom, you can increase in wisdom. If Jesus increased in stature, you can increase in stature. If Jesus increased in favor, my life by this anointing must become a manifestation of the glory of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Do you believe in prophecy? Can I speak over your life? You see, the prophetic has been abused to a point that the life and the power that comes from it is no longer seen, unfortunately and sadly. And I know God is helping his body on that wise. But let me tell you the truth. There are certain realms in the spirit you can never enter until the prophetic comes to midwife your journey. As powerful as Jesus was when he walked upon the earth, three prophets had to play a role in his life, otherwise he would not rise. Number one was Simeon the prophet. Number two was Anna the prophetess. Number three was John the Baptist himself. Otherwise Jesus would have failed as Jesus, the word incarnate. Among the many factors that control results in this kingdom is the power of the prophetic. The prophetic can recalibrate climates. And you believe me when I say that. Recalibrate climates. There are two dimensions to the prophetic. There is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic. Where God reveals details about your life, brings edification, comfort, builds your faith and gives you direction. 
But the more superior dimension to the prophetic is the creative dimension. It makes things to happen that had no business happening. When the prophet said, by this time tomorrow, he was not revealing what would have happened anyway. No, no. He made it happen. So the creative dimension of the prophetic scans events that are consistent with the will of God and with the creativity of a movie director, he picks those events and makes them manifest in your life. That means on your way out from this church, you were not supposed to meet a destiny helper, but the prophetic can come upon your life. Listen to me. Believe what you are hearing. It can place someone on the road who has no business going there. So when God says, I'm going to lift you, you see, what happens is that the spirit of wisdom moves in honor to that prophecy if it is of God and begins to source for the human actors that must participate with prophecy to make it happen. Now men of their own accord can reject that prophetic word. It will keep scanning around Lagos until it finds a man and then it positions that man and acts out the manifestation of that prophecy. I pray for you in the name that is above all names. Every door that has been closed over your life, I stand by the God who has called me and I speak to that door. Fountain of life, that door opens now. 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 Everything upon your life that represents witchcraft and the activity of darkness, manipulations of familiar spirits, orchestrations of dark powers, I come in the name of the Lord and by the agency of the blood, I decree and declare that spiritual climate is shifted over your life. That climate is shifted over your life, shifted over your family, shifted over your life, shifted over your family shifted over your life in this kingdom hear me believers who hates you does not matter don't worry about who hates you but who likes you that is the person you should be concerned about are we together if you are Esther don't worry about her man your concern should be Ahasuerus that is the one who can make you king and that is the one who can remove you in the name of Jesus everyone ordained to be a helper by God who is yet to show up in your life by the power of prophecy I compel them to show up in your life I compel them to show up in your life show up in your business show up in your ministry in the name of Jesus Christ You have lost relationships. Help those under the anointing. You have lost money. You have lost many things. But restoration is a possibility. I want to place something upon your head. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy over you. Between now and the end of May, I call upon the God of heaven that everything you have lost right from last year into this year you have the faith to believe it I declare restore 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 in the name of Jesus hallelujah let me speak over those trusting God for a job. One time Jesus sent people, he gave a parable to look for men to go and walk in the vineyard. He met others who agreed for a denary. Later on, he was still looking for people. 
and there were some unemployed people and he said why sittest thou idle he said no man employs us and immediately he spoke there was a there was something for them to do I pray for you your space in this Lagos or in Nigeria or in Africa or in any nation of the world I push you by prophecy to that space I push you by prophecy to that space in the name of Jesus Fountain of life, hear the word of the Lord. You are stepping into your season of laughter. I want you to write it down. I'm saying it to you by the spirit of the living God. Sarah said, and all those who hear this will laugh with me. This is what the Lord is saying I should prophesy to you. And in the name that is above all names, the grace that backs that prophetic word, I release it upon you. Laughter in your homes. Laughter in your job. Laughter in this church. For the Bible says, though weeping endures for, but for the moment. And even with the night, it says, but joy. I prophesy to you, enter your season of laughter. Testimonies upon testimonies. God will turn your life around. Turn your life around. Turn your destinies around in the name of Jesus. And every force that has found that you must cry and remain crying as a family, as individuals, I curse it right now. Again, I repeat, step into your season of laughter. Please stand. Let's stand. Laughter is connected to victory. You don't laugh during trainings. Laughter is also connected to completion. You go and investigate the meaning of laughter. Laughter like tongues is a mystery. That is the reason why even babies laugh. They have no knowledge yet they laugh. Because it's a mystery. Sarah cried for many years. But she laughed when Isaac came. That means laughter is also associated with the birthing of new things, new visions. Children, barren people who have not carried children will stand on this altar and celebrate twins and triplets. So shall it be. In Jesus' name. For someone whilst you are seated here your parcel from heaven after many many days and many years of witchcraft operation stopping it from arriving whilst you are here in koinonia it has finally arrived the world of men and in the name of jesus listen let me tell you the truth and i don't i hate to sound arrogant and forgive me if i do but even as a human being in my own little way God has used me to extend love and compassion in the area of finances to people. And I have seen what it has done to them. This is me as a man. I've had the honor of giving somebody one naira, two naira, and I've seen how it changed their lives. How much God? What are you saying? God can end your prayer request in a moment. I'm telling you. You don't believe me? not talking about finances so but as I just said it is just compassion that came from my heart value favor now let me tell you the truth value is your own responsibility but you see you can have what to give and be serving the wrong people they would still not bless you it is the assignment of God to keep rearranging your audience Till you find yourself in the midst of the people who have a recognition for what you carry and I'm praying it for someone because you are gifted truly you have worked on your gift but the audience you have been serving are wrong audience they don't have listen if you find yourself in the midst of people 
who are not ordained to celebrate what you carry, they can despise you even if you are a champion. When God wants to help such a man, he rearranges your audience. I have taught you here, Joseph interpreted the dream of the baker. The same gift that made him a king, but nobody rewarded him because of the person's dream he interpreted. He interpreted the dream of the wine presser. He remained there. But when the king dreamt and he interpreted the king's dream, immediately he became prime minister. Same gift, not an addition, just a change of audience. Let me prophesy to someone. May my God change your audience. May my God bring kings before you gatekeepers before you captains of industry before you in the name of Jesus Christ let me tell you the truth for many years I served many territories with the grace God gave me but of course it's the law of process I served many territories that had disdain for this grace that you celebrate today but when God wanted to show me mercy he changed the audience and brought you. Hear me. There are many businessmen hearing me here. What you carry can give you an international standing. But it is wrong people who have been seeing your ideas. And they will be striking a pen on great destiny altering ideas. What you need is for the right person. There are people who have been praying for you. They just don't know you are the one they are praying for. They have been praying for a secretary and yet you are close to them. You are the kind of secretary that they will, even if it's one million naira per month, they will pay you if they really discover that you are the one. Do you know a man can pray and not know what he's praying for? A man can pray and not know how his answer will look like. I'm praying for you again. The person ordained to reward you for what you carry to reward your many years of investments. I call upon the God of my covenant tonight. Between now and the end of next month, may you find these people. May they find you. May you find them. May they find you. May there be a meeting point in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, let me tell you, when you find the men your gift was sent to bless they will almost worship you you will be flattered and say you mean this thing i have despised hello look up i hope you know the people to buy the oil of the of the wife of the prophet maybe they were praying god you mean nobody has oil whereas the oil they will buy was in a house but was in a quiet jar somewhere after the prophet spoke and it multiplied. He said, go and sell it. Meaning there are customers. You just have not seen them. There are people that when they see you, your oil will not spend the night. They will say, we have been praying for you. There are architects here. You have been meeting the wrong people. You, you should be designing cities. And yet you are still begging for mini projects. Because the wrong audience. I pray for you. May the God of my covenant rearrange your audience. Rearrange your audience. Rearrange your audience. Can I tell you the truth? Listen to me. When the right people see your gift, they will announce to their circle. That's what makes it the, the factor becomes so it's like wildfire. They will call all their friends and say, the person we have been praying for. The HR consultant we have been praying for. The man of God whose messages we've been praying to hear. Whoever is praying for you, praying that you arrive, praying that you come into their space, by prophecy, I push you to their space. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please be seated. Are you learning tonight? So when the glory of God wants to find expression in your life, it finds expression as wisdom. It finds expression 
as power it finds expression as wealth wealth provide possibilities there are things you cannot do if you are not blessed you cannot do you can make noise and you cannot do it it's as simple as that I will always make reference to the privilege God has given us to hold the conferences we are holding across many nations that has happened by the Spirit of God it's one thing to hear God but it's another thing to have the capacity to obey him there are many of you who God has given instructions to but the wherewithal to obey is not there again I pray for you one last time in the name of Jesus I know you have ideas but may help us start the financial journey for you may God raise someone to help you with your rent may God raise someone to buy you a vehicle May God raise someone to give you a house. It's not laziness. It's called the help of God. It doesn't make you lazy. It only gives you acceleration. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Sit down. Three platforms for ascribing glory to God. Three platforms. We're discussing doxazo. How the glory of God is revealed and how God is glorified in the life of the saints. Three platforms. You want to give glory to God through your life? I want to show you how. How does God get glory from the saints? If we have a mandate to translate our experiences with God, to reveal his glory, but then to make him known. Remember my definition of doxazo. Let me define it again for you. To make the dignity and the worth of a person or thing to become manifest and to become acknowledged. If the nations, like we always sing here, become our anthem. If the nations must see Jesus. If the nations must acknowledge that he is Lord indeed. What is the return channel? How does God get glory from the saints? Never forget these platforms you are about to hear. Anybody whose life is about this cannot fail. Cannot fail. Cannot fail. Number one, the first platform for ascribing glory or returning glory to God is when we bear fruit, fruit bearing, producing extraordinary results. Take it down for me. You want to ascribe glory to God? Bear fruit, much fruit, bear fruit. Produce extraordinary results in your life. And I show you how God is glorified. Extraordinary results. John 15, 8. Herein is our Father glorified. When ye bear much fruit. How is God glorified? Not just when you sing about fruitfulness. Not just when you talk about fruitfulness. There are many people who say, I love you, Lord. I want you to see you glorified. I'm showing it to you now. If your life is not bearing fruit, you are a liar. You don't love God. If you really love God, it's not by a false sense of pretense and religiosity. Bear fruit. Produce results. Extraordinary results. Results in wisdom like I've taught you. Results of power. When the sick are healed through his hand upon your life. When people are transformed, God is glorified. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Listen, I receive, I manifest your power 
and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest the prayer. Your power, your wisdom till the nations. Jesus, lift it up, glorify, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life, breathe, Lord, breathe, Lord, breathe, it's a prayer, breathe upon my life, I receive. Your power, your wisdom, and your wisdom, till the nation, 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 you know the same way Nigerian puts his hand and says, I pledge to Nigeria my country. This is the creed of a witness. Not the creed of a believer. No. You cannot do exploits as a believer. Revelation transitions you from a believer to a witness. When you are a witness, you are empowered. You are enlightened as a believer, but you are empowered as a witness. There is a difference. As a believer, your jurisdiction is enlightenment, illumination. But when God wants to use you, he transits you from a believer to a witness. It is at the point of being a witness, a validator, that you are empowered. So the song says, I receive. It says, I manifest. Because if you receive a loan, and you do not manifest, it is not doxazo. I receive by experience, but I manifest as a mandate, your power, signs and wonders, extraordinary supernatural things. But the world, the cosmos, does not just need power alone. They need wisdom. They need wisdom. It is wisdom according to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. And then Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. The Bible says we are his workmanship. Then in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10, it says now, I like this, to the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold, not power, the manifold. The government does not want to see power. They want to see wisdom. It is wisdom that puts policies wisdom the power drives out spirits but wisdom builds the organizations if the only thing you have is a power to cast to bind oh you will not do much for the kingdom you need power and you need wisdom till the nations see jesus hold on take it higher for me i like this part of the song because you see you can receive his power. You can receive his wisdom. And all these extraordinary things begin to manifest. That is doxa, not doxazo. Doxazo is when he's glorified through the healing. Doxazo is when he's glorified through the lifting. Doxazo is when he's glorified through your prosperity, when he's glorified through the teaching anointing, when he's glorified, it turns from doxa to doxazo, when glorifying Jesus becomes the intent. Many believers have cabal, they have doxa, they have prophetic grace, they have apostolic power, but unfortunately, they have not translated it to help the nation see Jesus. By the time this becomes all about Joshua Selman, a building of empire, a making of names for myself, it may be Doxa, but not Doxazo. The moment Jesus is not the epicenter, if it is not about revealing him and glorifying him, in Koinonia we say Jesus revealed, 
and Jesus glorified. You can reveal Jesus and glorify self. The mandate was corrupted. It must be Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. One of my covenants with God. If you will let men see me, I will take you to places you never imagined you will go. You will stand before kings. You will stand before nobles. They will call you blessed. They will be the first to stretch their hands of fellowship. If you will let men see me. The mandate is not doxa. The mandate is doxazo. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. You have given me this prophetic gift. Lord, show me how you will be glorified in it. By the time you prophesy and people are clapping for you, you remind them that I am an ordinary person. But there is one who is mightier than me. He's the one who deserves the applause. Now you have turned Doxa to Doxazo. You've handed over the glory. You want to see Jesus glorified? Bear fruit. And then when men look at the fruit, point them. Now that you have the attention, point them to him. Point them to him. He gave you beauty, doxa. Use the beauty for his glory, doxazo. Now he's glorified. Esther, don't be beautiful for nothing. Use your beauty to get to the palace. Use your getting to the palace to take away her man. And then stop the killing of the Jews. Now that is doxazo. Gideon, don't just use your ability to fight and be hiding. The purposes of God are at stake. Joseph of Arimathea, don't buy a real estate called a grave just for nothing. Make sure you preserve it because that is where Jesus will be buried. And on account of your donating that grave, we will say, oh death, where is your sting? And oh grave, where is your victory? Listen to me. I tell you sincerely, I have revealed to you by this sermon one of the biggest secrets in my life. It is beyond my prayer life. It is beyond my fasting life. It is beyond Bible study. Is that I have found the wisdom in the foolishness of stepping out of the way and allow your entire life to be all about revealing his glory. I will sing it once. Then you will join me. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe upon my life. It's your prayer. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe upon my life. Listen. I receive. I manifest. Your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted till the nations see Jesus, till the nations see Jesus, till the nations. See Jesus lifted up, glorified. Listen to me. Go and register that company with the intention of revealing Jesus. Whilst you are praying and fasting, don't just look for power. Lord, give me power so that they will know that I'm also a man of God. You will waste that fast for nothing. Be glorified. That is the anthem of the believer. Be glorified through this business. Lord, I'm trusting you for 10 billion naira, 1 billion, 1 million, 100 million, whatever amount. And the, the intent is that I will be able to build something that gives you a name. The Jerusalem temple would have become a monument. But Solomon said, now arise, O Lord, come to your resting place. Doxazo. This is not just brick and mortar with gold inside. I have built you a house, your majesty. Come, take your place. Sit down. Let me give you number two. We have to wrap up. Ah, God is working on someone's heart tonight. Purifying your motive. 
I sense that after tonight's teaching, many people are truly going to begin to see there are doors that is God's hand that has closed it by himself because there are things you need to hear. This blind pursuit for money, blind pursuit for results, your results will not bless the nations until you connect your results with the revelation of Jesus. Number two, how does God get glory in the life of the saints? One, by bearing fruit, by producing results. When you produce results, let me tell you the truth. God is glorified. When you produce results, extraordinary results, intellectual results, business results, career results, professional results, ministerial results. The end of every argument is results. You can pretend around it, but there is nothing you can do in the presence of results. Genuine results. Two, how is God glorified in the life of the saints? How do we ascribe and return glory to God? Are you ready? Number two, longevity of impact. The second way God is glorified is through sustained impact. Sustained impact. Let me tell you the truth. There is nothing that brings reproach to the name of the Lord as rising and causing the nations to see you as representing the image and the name of the Lord then going down. It's better to not even start. One of the ways that God is greatly glorified is when your results last. It gives people enough room to see, to criticize, to probe, and then to repent, to be convinced, and to be converted. When your results don't have longevity, it justifies people's hatred for God. Did you hear what I said? That means if you rise up in ministry today, shouting, doing all kinds of things, and in two, three years, you just go down, people will say, uh-huh, we've told you, God does not lift all the, no, no, no. But if you last, after the criticisms are down, after the naysayings are down, after the ill wishes are down, you are still standing. Sooner or later, someone will start saying, no, this kind of longevity, there has to be a hand in it. The hand of God is the one who sustains results like this. He says, I lay me down and I slept. I waked for the Lord sustained me. Someone say that, for the Lord sustained me. Say it again, for the Lord sustained me. Look up please. I preached a message last year called Ichabod. I want you to go and listen to that message again. Please hear me. Whether you are in ministry, whether you are in business, I pray for you. Whatever you will make you rise up. And when people are about to celebrate God in your life, the devil just brings you down. Satan's mastery, Satan's profession is looking for those who are high up there in life and business. Our world is full of people who were once anointed, once great, once powerful, once influential, once evangelist, once Christians. Longevity. John 15, 16. You have not chosen me. Watch this now. But I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit. Let's read the remaining line. And that your fruit should remain. If every crop that is harvested rots in 24 hours, there will be no storage and you cannot bless people. It is because of the crop's ability to withstand harsh conditions and all kinds of preservation strategies. Is that true? Those of you in agriculture, when you harvest something from the farm, the way it is like that, you, you depending on what crop, you create systems of preservation. Some of you are into poultry. How many of you, not to give you bad memories, but how many of you have seen your birds get to maybe one month, get into two months, and then something happens overnight and hundred birds just die? By evening, hundred more just die. Which one is painful? That they stole your money or that the birds died? Think about it. If the money was stolen, you say, well, 
may God punish or forgive the thief, whichever one he wants to do. But as for this, I'm not careless. But now you invested time. You invested everything. Just when the harvest was about to come. Nobody goes to your poultry farm and carries a chicken alive and eats it. It is in the chickens or the, the poultry's ability to stay and then when everything is clean, it is now put in a mall, whatever it is, or served. The chef now does his work there. What we eat at the table is not the poultry that is alive there. It's the one that has lasted until it got to the table. Let me tell you the truth. Sustainability of impact brings great glory to the name of the Lord. It is one of the reasons why we honor fathers. We honor fathers because they have demonstrated that God can keep men. A man who is celebrating 40 years in ministry, 50 years in ministry, you see that now? There are many people who were not born when they started serving God. People laughed at them and said, you will not stay five years. You will not stay 10 years. I was looking at a dear woman of God, now in her 80s, she was preaching. And I looked at her, I remember years ago, people used to castigate and talk about the woman. Many of those people have died and gone. And the woman in her 80s is still preaching. I said, that's right, this is my message. This is how God is glorified. Can I tell you, anybody waiting to hear that you have fallen will wait forever. Yeah. I say it to you again, anybody waiting to hear that your company has gone down, that you are no longer anointed, that that prophetic grace is not, they, are, they will wait forever. Yeah. There is a hand that holds the believer, except you choose to jump out of that hand by yourself. Now, let me teach you something. Do you know the higher you rise, the more painful the fall? The person who is on the ground, if he just rolls to the other side, he didn't fall, he just rolled. But the more you are elevated, it becomes a fall with respect to your current distance. If somebody falls from the top of this building, he will most likely die. If someone falls, that's why there are almost no survivors in a plane crash because of the altitude. When you have an accident with a bicycle, even a car, it's possible to have survivors. They may be injured, but they'll survive. But from the air, not even with the AIDS, all of those things, most likely they will die. That means the higher you rise, you need to not just study how results are produced, but how you continue to produce results. Are we together? It is the reason why we look up to the fathers jealously and we honor them. Do you know why? The reason is because there is something we know how to produce results too, but we don't know how to remain yet. They are the ones who will teach us how to remain. And let me teach you, if you are a young minister here, listen carefully. That you have results today does not mean you will have it in 10 years. There is a skill that the fathers have mastered through their pain, through their covenants with God that can help them remain after 20, 30 years. And this is what you must learn. I had a vision many years ago. I was called to minister somewhere. I will not mention the name of the ministry, one of the ministries of our fathers. And when it was time for me to stand in that vision, um, there was no platform like this. You would stand on the pulpit in the vision. Imagine that I had to stand here. And when I stood there, it was shaking. And I was just watching. It was as if I was going to fall. And I saw them, they were just looking and smiling at me. It was as though they were not permitted to come and correct me. But there was a way I could look at them and learn how to stand. Eventually, I found out that there was a way you put your toe that you will stand. And I woke up from that vision. There is a skill to remaining. Respect people whose results have lasted. You are in business, don't rejoice over one year profit. Find somebody who has had 15 years with different governments, 15 years with different people and learn. What does it take to remain when governments change? What does it take to remain when all kinds, there's something you can learn. I pray for you, whatever wants to abort your result, attracting the nations to see God in your life, and then you just fall like a pack of cards. May my God deliver you from it. Are we learning? How is God glorified? One, when we produce results, when we bear fruit. Number two, when our results are sustained. Psalm 92. Let me show you something. 
Sabrandi Balanduskia. Verse 14. Read it with me. One, two, read. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. Say, I receive it. One more time. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age and they shall be fat and flourishing. Does that look like your destiny? Yeah. That it will never be said once upon a time. You see that young lady? She was a great worshiper. You see that young man? If he prophesied upon your life before, no. In old age, they shall still bring forth fruit. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Number three. How is God glorified through the life of the saints? How do you translate doxa to doxazo? How do you reveal his glory and cause him to receive glory through your life? Are you ready? Testimonies and public declarations of his faithfulness. We're wrapping up now. Testimonies and public declarations of his faithfulness. Psalm 22, 22. Testimonies. Now you know why we place great value on testimonies. I will declare thy name unto my brethren, it says. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise thee. Psalm 92, 1 to 4. Psalm 92, 1 to 4. Testimonies and public declarations of his faithfulness. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. And to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. Verse 2. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Verse 3. Upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp and with a solemn sound. Verse 4. For thou, O Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of your hands. Public declarations. Of his faithfulness Psalm 96 beginning from verse 1 follow carefully as I read Psalm 96 oh sing unto the Lord a new song sing unto the Lord all the earth verse 2 sing unto the Lord bless his name watch this show forth his salvation from day to day declare his glory among the hidden his wonders among all people for for the Lord is great and greatly to be praised he is to be feared above all gods. Five, for all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Six, honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Verse eight, give unto the Lord the glory that is due his name. You see there? Give unto the Lord through your testimonies and through the public declarations of his faithfulness the glory that is due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Final verse. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Let me tell you the truth. When God shows you his mercy, and you keep quiet you stop him from being glorified did you hear what I'm saying it's important I know we live in a time where sometimes certain testimonies require wisdom are we together now because there are certain testimonies that may implicate you because of the size the nature and the audience you are speaking to I understand that but within the boundary of wisdom it is important for people to know what God has done. I tell you, if people do not know that God healed you, they will not believe he's a healer. If people do not know that God promoted you, when we call for testimonies, next week is miracle service. Every service when we call for testimonies is beyond a validation that a man of God is powerful. No. That is the reason why we don't share them in secret. And that is the reason why we give glory to the name of the Lord. Promise will often come up here and say, who is the doer of the testimonies? Now, when you beat your chest and say, I, Joshua Selman, 
You see all the things that God has done. Now you know I'm anointed. You see, you have stopped him from being glorified. Are we together now? Testimonies. Ten lepers were healed. Jesus was passing, but he remained there. Only one returned back. And he said, sir, I just came to say thank you. And he said, were there not ten of you? In other words, you have stopped me from being glorified. Let me show you something. John 2, 9 and 10. John 2, 9 and 10. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that he made wine, watch this, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, verse 10, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but you have kept the good wine until now. Verse 11, let's read together. Everyone want to read. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory. That's the expression doxazo manifested forth his glory what was the result the people believed in him the people believed the disciples believed there are many people today who have believed in jesus on account of the manifold testimonies that have come out from this altar there are people who otherwise they would not believe god lifts except that they saw someone who god lifted who came and said look at my evidence I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and I found that Babu Wani Kamaruka. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and I found that Babu Wani Kamaruka. Truly, I have searched and searched all the earth. Searched and searched all the earth, I found that Babu Wani There is a way men can see the work of God in your life, and you will see someone crying, and the person goes down on his knees and says, Lord, forgive me for doubting you. When you told me you could lift my family, I didn't believe you. Here is an embodiment of your faithfulness. Now I believe. The woman said, come see a man who has told me everything. I am transformed, but come and see the man who did it. And the Bible says they came in their numbers. When they met Jesus, they said, now we believe. Not because of what you have seen, for we have seen him. We have a testimony ourselves. There are things that we will continue to do for the kingdom through our conferences, through the teachings of the word, through the manifestations of God's power and grace. By the time you change, by the time favor begins to work in your life, by the time your prayer life comes alive and you come and stand here before the people of God and say, look at my life. This is my former self. This is who God has shown mercy. Somebody seated somewhere. Somebody seated outside somewhere. Somebody following online will look and say, my God, I was just about to give up. God is glorified when the saints are not silent about his faithfulness. There is a difference between testifying, declaring his goodness and bragging. Bragging puts you at the center and you direct people to focus on you. It is by my power and the might of my hand that koinonia is running like this. That is not a testimony. That is pride. God is not glorified in that. Mama, by the time you put four of your children and say, everybody, look at this. I was not educated. I didn't go to school. But I prayed a sincere prayer, say, Mother, raise my children. Look at them now. One of them works with the government. One of them is a consultant. One of them is a politician somewhere. One of them is a nation builder somewhere. Somebody will look at a frail, uneducated woman and look at these giants that stand before her. That is a testimony. The person will now open his Bible 
and say, I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy. Now you will understand that scripture because there is an individual that embodies it. For someone, you need to say, Lord, I am available. Testify through me. I am available. Let the nation see what you can do through my life. Let the nation see that you can build through my life. You can bless through my life. You can change through my life. You can impart through my life. Every time I come here to preach, I'm motivated by my love for Jesus. Number two, I'm motivated by my love, my passion, my commitment for you. But I'm also motivated by the fact that my standing here will give the nations a chance to once again see what Jesus can do through yielded vessels. Are we together? It is the reason why sometimes, even though it is very uncomfortable to share certain testimonies, we know we are bound with the covenant of revealing his glory. And sometimes we just have to look beyond the perceptions that people will have over those testimonies and still tell the nations that he can help men and still tell the nations that he can lift them. By the time you carry your tea and your bread and you lift it up to the nations and say, nations, I was once a hungry person outside, but I believed in Jesus. Look at tea, look at bread, but this has not distracted me. I'm introducing you not to the tea and the bread. The tea and the bread is just an evidence. I'm introducing you to the giver of that tea and that bread. God beats his chest from the throne and says, you did this for me? One million people have been convinced that I am faithful through your witness. It is called Dogzazo, a display of the grace and the glory of God. When God does great things through my life and through this ministry, Sometimes when people send me text messages commending and saying all kinds of nice things, I'm happy and blessed, honestly. But the ones that move me is when they say we have seen God glorified. We have seen my faith has been stirred up. I love Jesus now. I believe in him. I was about to give up. We have been taught that when people serve God, they fail in life. But your life is proving that there is honor to priesthood. There is dignity when men serve God. Now, I begin to feel the joy that is in the heart of the Father. And let me tell you the truth. When your life is determined to reveal him, hmm, then he will pour a measure of that glory upon you. And the nations will look at you and wonder what sort of a man are you what sort of grace do you carry what sort of possibilities are you commanding even by your life this is what God wants to do in the life of someone this is what God wants to do he wants to change you from the inside out he wants to place a mighty anointing upon you a mighty anointing upon your ministry a mighty anointing upon your life so that when men look at you they will see Jesus when men look at your business they will see his power don't tell me you are an apostle let me see how Jesus is glorified through your apostolic ministry don't tell me you are a prophet don't tell me you are a businessman don't tell me you are a captain of industry don't tell me you are a professional I salute your sacrifice and your investment but he wants to see Doxazo, a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people called to show forth it's a mandate called to show forth by the time I see how you sponsor the gospel by the time I see how you feed the hungry and those children you gathered from the street can look up and tell the world Hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord you have demonstrated the love of Jesus in practical terms listen to me ladies and gentlemen the mandate in this teaching tonight is number one to experience the God of the Bible and to derive from that experience wisdom to derive from that experience power to derive from that experience wealth among many other possibilities that come from your experience with God and that when God puts you in that position you have it at the back of your mind that you owe it to give him glory. That is the idea of that doxazo. Not just the displaying of his glory, but using your results to direct the attention of men back to him. Unashamedly so, by producing fruits, 
by remaining longevity of your impact and finally by declaring before the nations as uncomfortable as it may be you let them know that he can lift men because he lifted me he can bless men because he blessed me he can turn Saul to Paul because he changed my life he can turn Rahab the prostitute to a woman of honor because he took my shame my past whatever and turned me into a sign and a wonder you can tell people that a fearful me as Gideon can become a warrior me as Gideon and they will not doubt because you are the evidence yourself you are not just holding the evidence we are going to pray father I am available be glorified through my life go ahead and pray father I am available be glorified be glorified someone is praying can you sing that song for me be glorified be glorified If results, fruits, bring glory to the name of the Lord. If longevity of impact brings glory to the Lord. If testimonies and declarations of his mercy and faithfulness brings glory to the Lord. It then means anything that fights your result is not fighting you, is fighting God. It then means anything that wants to cut short your impact that you are up today and down tomorrow, you must see it as an attack against this project of the revelation of Jesus. Anything that robs you of receiving a testimony or having the courage to come and declare his faithfulness must be antichrist. That becomes your final prayer point. Everything that wants to fight results in my life, everything that wants to fight longevity, someone you are about to pray, Anything that wants to fight my testifying before the people of God, I come against it now. Go ahead and pray. Dog Zazo, be glorified. The glory of God revealed through the results of the saints. The glory of God revealed through the wisdom that emanates from the saints. The glory of God revealed through the manifestation of his power in the saints. The wisdom of God, the power of God, the wealth of the kingdom, the favor that flows from believers, extraordinary supernatural results, results that cause men to wonder, demonstrating that God is at work in the world of men. God is at work in the midst of men. God is at work in his body, in his church. God is at work in the midst of his ministers. Take one final minute to pray. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Let your glory be revealed. Be glorified. Dog Zazo. I make the nations by my results respect and accord you the glory that is due your name. By the power and the strength of your life, your wisdom, your favor your beauty that flows through our lives that flows like a river through koinonia 
Let the nations know you are God. Let the nations know you are king. Let the nations know you are deliverer. Let them know you are healer. Let them know you are restorer. Let them know you are lifter. Let them know you can bless men. Let them know you can assist a man. You can help men to rise. You can bring dignity to men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I came in yesterday and I will tell you this and uh, sincerely from the depth of my heart I saw the way our mothers and the women in this church the love the graciousness the care you know I kept looking at them and wondering in my mind did they have to go this far and I could see that show of compassion and love and mercy number one i saw from yesterday and today it's not my first time here but i saw afresh that they were mothers indeed number two i saw again that these were people who did not just give a topic just to honor a conference but truly that from their hearts this was something that was already a lifestyle and for many they were willing to concretize it as a lifestyle their love and their benevolence was my own sermon in this conference. And I say that without any sense of flattery. Even up until this morning. I was so humbled by their show of love and compassion. And I said, Lord, thank you. I came to preach. But I also came as an audience to hear the foundations of Sapphire preach. And let me tell you, you preached a powerful message. Preached a powerful message. This is a women conference, but please allow my bias before we go to the second prayer. I have 10 more minutes. I want to also salute the men in this church. Hold on before you clap. I will tell you why. Because for the men in this church, to have allowed their wives this freedom of expression and to give them this opportunity to stretch this far to make this happen without feeling insecure without feeling sad the fallen man is usually um, his ego driven and so when you see men who have been cultured by the power of God so enlightened and transformed by the power of the word of God to allow the purposes of God find expression unhindered we cannot ignore it can we honor our men in this church I'm not a politician this is not a manifesto for any political party I stand here as one sent by God truly everyone is standing here some of you are fathers mothers you probably may have been too hard on your children and this sermon is a cause for a rethink don't say I'm like that that's where the Holy Spirit comes as a helper he can help us change some of us children we are here and it's not demons attacking our parents is the trouble we keep showing them after everything they have given it's time for a change don't say it's their responsibility to take care of me one day you will be a parent too remember growing up i used to see my parents do certain things and you know as children would frown at a lot of things but when i became an adult and i became a leader my respect and my regard for parents multiplied and it continues to multiply every day unbelievable things they have to endure and they had to endure some of us here are workers we need to be merciful to our subordinates some of us here are leaders at different levels it is good to be strict and work in compliance with the terms that make for excellence and progress but we must keep a space in our hearts where we can show mercy 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 sing a song and then we'll do the last prayer Lord make us instruments 
of your peace where there is hatred let your love increase Lord make us instruments of your peace the walls of pride and prejudice shall cease when we are your instruments of peace there are many family people after this meeting you need to go back home and say it's all right this fight and this this ego driven conflict in this home let's swallow our pride and show one another mercy let's fight for what we cherish the most for some of us you need to return back you are deserving you are not yet deserving of mercy i meant to say many of you looking at me here you are saying thank god apostle is preaching this thank god my boss is in this church he will not show you mercy because you are not broken some of you are not yet broken can i tell you provided there is pride so that you don't misunderstand what i've been laboring here to say if there is pride and an unrepentant heart i've told you that mercy is a waste as merciful as god is there are people going to hell today there are people in hell the fact that there is someone in hell should tell you that mercy has limits rebellion and disobedience keeps pushing you away out of the boundary of mercy and the moment you get out of the boundary of mercy all that you see left is judgment are we together i prayed yesterday for some prayer requests and I just felt stirred in my heart that there were people who did not have an opportunity to submit those requests. I have seven more minutes here and I don't intend to shoot beyond the time. At the permission of your pastor, can I please request that in the next one minute, please write what you are trusting God for. If you were not able to submit it, ushers, please help us. In case you wrote yesterday and it, you wrote in unbelief, you didn't stretch your faith to write the things that need to be solved please i want you to write very quickly the covenant keeping god is about to arise for you please write it with faith in your heart ah. from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed help me Adonai from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed Adonai from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be Adonai from the rising of the sun please write it down Everything you are trusting God to do in your life. Please write it down. Write it down. Father, healing by your mercy for my loved one. Someone is having cancer, even stage four. Write it down. Lord, I'm trusting you to recover all the losses that I incurred from COVID. Write it down. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing. It says, but in everything, Philippians 4, 6, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, it says, let your request be made known unto God. There is a God that answers prayers. There is a God that answers prayers. 
please ushers help if you are done can you wave it let's save time just wave it please help them someone is there are people waving theirs just wave it and we'll bring it before the God of heaven make sure you write something believe me God will surprise you the God of mercy will so surprise you From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. From the rising of the sun. For those of you who are following online watching by television or you are connecting through the internet you may be wondering apostle how do we get our request here let me tell you what you need to do if you can't send it i want you to just write your prayer request and then lift it as a point of contact while i pray expecting the god of all grace and mercy to visit you are we done i'm about to start praying now is there someone okay please help uh, we have our father there Please everyone begin to pray in one minute while you are standing. Lord, you who is the God of mercy, arise for me. Please don't keep quiet. Pray in one minute. Arise in your power. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her. Yet the set time has come. Pray, pray. Go ahead and pray. God of wonders will arise for someone believe me for somebody writing this testimony you will keep recording testimonies till this year is done hallelujah now here's what I want you to do you don't have to kneel I'll do the kneeling for you as I kneel to pray please in one minute I'd like you to cry because some of you have cried and cried cry to the God of all mercy Lord these Egyptians I see today May I see them no more forever. Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. No distraction. We have just a minute or two. Someone is praying. You came to church this morning. Healings. Miracles supernatural provisions by the mercy of God liftings restorations deliverances from the valley of the shadow of death someone pray someone pray someone pray
My God, His mighty presence in this place. Fill this place. Is someone praying? An end comes to captivity. I want you to agree with me and please shout a resounding amen when we begin to pray in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of prophecy I declare unto you that these Egyptians you see today may you see them no more forever for someone here in the name of Jesus my God is bringing you restoration before the end of this month not next year not next month how God will begin to move people and things will surprise you let it be for you in the name of Jesus. For someone here, God is saying, I should tell you that that missing donkey is on his way back home. I'm saying this by the Spirit of God. That missing donkey is on his way back home. You will understand what God is saying. That missing donkey is on his way back home. For someone here God is speaking to you with five loaf and two fish you will feed five thousand and yet twelve baskets will be left in the name of Jesus Christ for another person here it will be for you like it was for Mordecai the Bible says that night could not the king sleep and he said bring me the chronicles and they opened where Mordecai saved the life of the king and was not honored in the name of Jesus let the book of remembrance be open for your sake just be sensitive one minute and we're wrapping up something is happening in this place this woman I'm seeing oil coming on her this woman close to the one lifting her hands help that woman I just saw oil and the Lord is saying it's the oil of favor the oil of favor I use her as a point of contact to pray for everyone here help them please where you have not seen favor in your life in Abakatoshkatebakata may that grace rest upon you now you don't have to bring them out. Yes. May that grace rest upon you now. Hallelujah. Please hear me. When Jesus was born, the spirit of the Antichrist through Herod wanted to seek for him and kill him. 
they hid him somewhere and the angel appeared and told joseph he said you can now return those who seek the life of your child are gone i pray for you in the name of jesus christ those who seek your downfall those who seek your tears those who want evil to continue in your life those who laugh with you in the open but go back in the secret and wish you evil may the god of judgment arise in the name of jesus in the name of jesus I'm looking at hands in the realm of the spirit God is showing me but I'm seeing the hands empty there is nothing on them can I tell you empty handedness is a cause I want to rebuke it from your life father I cry to you in the name of Jesus oh God of mercy arise everyone here every family here represented who have suffered the cause and the plague of empty handedness may my God visit you this morning anyone here trusting God for a job you have applied you have done everything you know to do in the name of Jesus three months from today by the power that raised Christ from the dead may my God grant you rest Amen. hallelujah we're wrapping up please believe now let me pray I prayed a prayer yesterday that I want to repeat today if there is anyone here or any family the spirit of death has been looking for you through dreams you go to sleep and you see yourself dead people calling you the bible says what fellowship and what what does the living have to do with the dead any spirit of the dead calling you in the name of jesus here at this conference by the power that raised christ from the dead i separate you from the spirit of the grave hallelujah I did say also yesterday that all blessings come from God through men to men please never forget this all blessings come from God through men that means you need both God and men to receive some of you God said yes since 2017 but the men that must also say yes the devil has been driving them from your life let me call them by prophecy in the name of Jesus every human vessel who has been ordained and assigned to partner with prophecy and bring the manifestation of the Word of God in your life in the name of Jesus I release them right now to your destiny I release them right now to your destiny I release them right now to your destiny hallelujah in one minute i'd like you to pray for the foundations of sapphire my apologies for taking two or three minutes let's pray for our mothers our aunties the women in this church please open your mouth in one minute and cry from the depth of your heart lord we pray for foundations of sapphire by the power that raised christ from the dead bless them honor them anoint them increase them multiply them The sounds of mourning would not be heard in their midst. The sounds of shame and defeat would not be heard in their midst. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You came to this church this morning and you are standing right here. As you listen to me teach on the mercy of God, the Holy Spirit began to convict your heart to tell you that you need to be a principal recipient of that mercy this morning the hallmark of the demonstration of God's mercy was his substitutionary sacrifice on the cross you are here and Jesus is calling you please no distraction perhaps you are saying apostle I remember giving my life to Jesus but as it is my life and my destiny has gone haywire I need restoration 
our time is gone we just have one minute for you here this morning service i want you to win that war this morning wherever you are please run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand before me here it is an opportunity to make it right with jesus don't look at anybody this is between you and jesus please come and stand celebrate them as they come i'll count three and we'll begin to pray Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Come, calling for you and for me. Two, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. Come home, come home. You are weary, come on, come to Jesus, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling all sinners, come home. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm not sure if I'm saved or not, join them. There is no such thing as I'm not sure. If you are not sure, come and be sure this morning. Please, quickly, very quickly, we want to pray. remember you are not a candidate for mercy when there is no brokenness there has to be a broken and a contrite spirit as powerful as the mercy of god is it depends on brokenness the magnet that attracts it to your life is brokenness thank you for making this bold decision some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears jesus is calling you what a harvest this morning. Is someone celebrating Jesus? Don't be ashamed of your tears. He will give you a new beginning. Now please, look at me, all of you who are here. I know you are crying. Can I tell you this? Every one of us cried like you too. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Your tears are a token, a representation of of your desperation and your need my bible says the lord is nigh them that call upon him there are many people who come out for an altar call and they are not serious they just stand roaming around i assure you they were not saved coming out is not what saves you is the contriteness of heart and then professing with that prayer with faith in your heart thank you very much for making this decision may i please request that you lift your right hand and those who are following online you are making Jesus Lord of your life. Here is a chance to open up and receive. You pray this prayer also. It doesn't matter the nation, whether you are watching by way of rebroadcast. This is an opportunity for you to make Jesus Lord of your life. Please lift your hands, those of you in front here. I want you to say this after me. Honestly, there are people crying here, my God, and my heart is even... Say after me, dear Lord Jesus... One more time, say it again. I believe in you. Say it. Let the devil hear you. Say, I believe in you. That you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. I declare that I cannot help myself help me this morning i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that from today and forever i am a child of god washed by the blood of the lamb amen and amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these ones for no man comes to you except you draw them they have responded to this call many of them with tears in their eyes lord jesus thank you for the honor of bringing this one to the king of kings and the lord of lords i pray that the power of god will keep you i pray that the grace of god will keep you by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven and in the name of jesus i declare that you start afresh with god today no going back you go forward ever and backward never. I declare that the power of sin, 
Satan, hell and the grave is broken over your life. For in Jesus name, I pray. Thank you. Now please, here's what I want you to do. Many of you are crying. Honestly, this is, you can't imagine how, I mean, it's been a long time since I saw so many people just crying and weeping before the Lord in genuine repentance. Our father is there waving his hands. Now here's what I want all of you to do. Please, in concert, I want you to follow him. And a few counselors will be there to pray with you. Just have your details and you'll be back. Have they been given the card? Or they'll be... Okay, praise God. Let's celebrate them as they go. Thank you. Please. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, the entire leadership of the church, Foundations of Sapphire, thank you for the honor of having me around to share the word of the Lord. And I pray that God will increase us. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin.